In applications of calculus to physics, it's often the case that we know rates of change and we want to know what the original functions were. So for example, Galileo figured out that the acceleration of objects near the surface of the earth is about 32 feet per second squared. And we know that the acceleration is the instantaneous rate of change of velocity and velocity is instantaneous rate of change of position. So one question we could ask is something like, uh, if we take a marble to the top of the Empire State Building, and let's say it's a thousand feet high, and then we drop the marble, what's the function that gives the height of the marble above the ground in feet after T seconds? So T seconds after being dropped. We know what the acceleration is. It's 32, and let's, let's call it negative 32 because it's pointing down. So we'll have uh, going up be the positive direction and going down be the negative direction. So A is negative 32. And we want to find out what the height is. Let's call the height H. So we want to find H of T. There are a couple of other pieces of information that we know. We know that we're dropping the marble. We're not throwing it down with the velocity. We're just dropping it. So when T equals zero at the moment that you drop the marble, the velocity is zero. So when we find the function v of t, we know that v of zero equals zero. And then the other thing that we know is that the position or the height when t equals zero is at the top of the building, so it's a thousand. So h of zero is a thousand and v of zero is zero. All right, so we're starting with acceleration. We need to move from acceleration down to velocity. So, uh, if acceleration is the instantaneous rate of change of velocity, it's the derivative of velocity, and the acceleration is negative 32, then what's the function that would give a derivative of negative 32? We've already looked at the fact that uh, if you've got a quadratic equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, we know that the derivative y prime is 2 times ax plus b. And in this case, the acceleration, the derivative, is negative 32. So that must be the b part. And the a part must be 0 because there's no variable in this acceleration. And then the c part, it could be anything because it doesn't show up in the derivative. So what we know is that the velocity must be um, negative 32 t, because t is the variable here, time, negative 32 t, and then plus some constant, but we don't know what the constant is yet. So we don't know the velocity completely yet, but we know it up to a constant. So let's say v of t is negative 32 t plus, we'll say capital C for constant. Um, we're going to go ahead and use the fact that we know v of 0 is 0. So let's plug in 0 for t in our velocity equation. And we get negative 32 times 0 plus c. And we know all of that has to be equal to 0 because the velocity when you drop it is 0. So that gives us an equation. We can simplify the equation, solve for c. We get c equals 0. So that tells us the velocity function is negative 32 times t. And now we just need to go from velocity to height. We know velocity is instantaneous rate of change of height. So we need to figure out what would the height function be so that its derivative would be negative 32 t. Um, so again, we got our e equation for the derivative of a quadratic y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We know that y prime is 2ax plus b. So we match that up. 2ax plus b is equal to, um, we've got negative 32t. So it's like negative 32x. So what is the original function, the original height function, whose derivative is negative 32t? Well, we know that we need a number so that when we multiply it by 2, we get negative 32. So that number must be 16, or uh, negative 16. 
So the a part of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, that a part must be negative 16. And then how about the b part? In the derivative, you get 2ax plus b. But in the derivative that we're given, negative 32t, there isn't a plus, a constant. So the b for us must be 0 this time. And then again, the c we don't know anything about because does not show up in the derivative. So, so far, we know that the height function is negative 16 t squared plus some constant, let's call it capital C again. So negative 16 t squared plus c. And then the one other thing we know is that the position at t equals zero is a thousand. So if we plug in zero for t, into our height function, we should get out 1,000. So negative 16 times 0 squared plus c equals 1,000. And that gives, you know, when you simplify that, you get c equals 1,000. So now we just go back and update the height function. It's now h of t equals negative 16 t squared minus, uh, I'm sorry, plus 1,000. And that's the height function. And by the way, this process of going backwards where you already know the derivative and you want to go back and find the original function, that's called finding an antiderivative. So antiderivatives are always going backwards and finding the original function.